Hello, Brett here. I'm going to be whipping through a whole bunch of concepts around linking OKRs to compensation. First, let's talk about the comp model. The comp model typically has, I'm going to say, three bands of compensation. The formula-based reward is typically what you think of. I've got a hard number that's auditable like EBITDA, and I'm going to multiply it by some performance index. Hard calculated. There's a second component, which is what's based on the OKRs, but it's a conversation. It's a conversation about how I did in those OKRs, recognizing that we're using the best possible as the target, and you're never going to achieve best possible. You're going to be like 70%, and it's a conversation with your boss about how well you're doing compared to how well you could have done and so forth. In fact, within that, there's often a individual component to the OKRs, if you want to go to that level, and then also a team component. So the conversation I have with my boss might be a combination of how do I contribute to the team and how do I contribute individually. Now, to make life super complicated, in most organizations these days, I could be performing on two or three different teams. But I should be able to get a bucket of those OKRs, see them, have that conversation, and sort out the numbers. And then lastly, obviously something about values, culture, attitude that comes from 360s, pulse surveys, and so on. So those are the three bands, and they're calculated slightly differently. Hard formula, um, an index based on a conversation, an index based on a conversation. And you probably have those components already. We're just are backing that up with facts and data. So let's talk about SMART. SMART is the traditional way that we manage uh, compensation metrics. There's some elements to think about. Uh, in terms of setting those OKRs, I think there's kind of three targets we should talk about. Most probable, which is what your SMART measures have been historically. They're what we have put into our budgets and our compensation. Best possible. Now, best possible is what happens if everything goes perfectly. So, you know, best possible in the morning is uh, when you drive to work, there's every light's green. And there's no line up at, the, at Starbucks. Uh, you find a parking spot right away. That's the best possible. Most probable might be an hour commute best possible might be 30 minutes, right? If you did that at two o'clock in the morning. And then there's a third one, which is I call John Doerr's aspirational. The problem with aspirational is it's a number pulled out your left ear and therefore it's not necessarily motivational. I have no idea how I'm going to get to it. And if it's not inspirational and motivational, it's not going to work in a comp model. Now, as I extend those out across time, uh, best possible, still significantly better than what's in your budget. So if I'm doing red, yellow, green, you know, it's red at some level below most profitable, amber as I approach most probable, and then green above that or different shades of green. Now, our experience is when you use best possible, you end up somewhere here. You end up better than most probable, not as good as best possible. And that is what we're trying to do with OKRs in terms of aspire, um, you know, inspiring better performance. So a couple of things I still got to talk about, like shortcomings of SMART. My research tells me and experience says three things. One is the problem with SMART is often it's set and forget, right? We set those goals and we don't even look about it till the next year. Therefore, again, they're not doing the job. Now, that's not a fault of SMART, that's a fault of your, your performance conversations. The benefit of OKRs is you're going to get them weekly and, and monthly and quarterly. You solve that problem. The second problem that people put down to SMART is they really work, they were developed and work for, you know, assembly, uh, low intellect jobs where it's, I'm repeating the same task again and again and again. And they're awesome at that, but they don't work well when there's creative thinking involved. And then finally, they restrict innovation because it's about compensation. It's about gaming the system. And so those are the common shortfalls of a traditional smart system. I got solutions slide after the next. The other thing we need to talk about is just compensation models in particular. The issue is OKRs tend to be leading indicators. I'm looking for predictors of future performance so I can hit those tripwires and coach navigate the business better. Whereas compensation measures tend to be lagging, they need to be consistent and constant for the year, they need to be auditable, they need to be subject to whatever the HR compensation rules are, and they're usually difficult to change without confusing the impact employees. And so for those reasons, 
it's a bit of a drag on the OKR system if I'm trying to link it to the comp model. And that's why we have those three bands. That solves that problem. In terms of SMART itself, right, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound, we just do a quick uh, dirty trick. We get rid of realistic because the issue is we're trying to get that best possible, which isn't realistic. So we swap that out with robust, right? And by robust, we're kind of saying, you know, does that measure work for all reasonable scenarios? And if it does, then we can still use smart. And we, it's a bit of a dirty trick, but it's still smart. We're just allowing it to be used with how we want to use best possible as the target. So here's an example OKR. Let's say, for example, for a programming department, inside of that, I might have an objective of uh, keep customers productive, right? Remember, the OKRs are supposed to talk about this in terms of the customer benefit. So I want my customers to be productive. And obviously, if I've got bugs and the system's down, I'm not productive. So I could have a metric like number of bugs found pre-ship. And that's an individual OKR. And we're going to use that as part of the performance conversation, that, that blue box on the first slide. I might have bugs found post-ship, uh, and that's part of the performance conversation. I could have hours downtime caused by bugs, and that's part of the formula. So instead of EBITDA on my first example, I could be using uh, the hours downtime as part of that mathematical calculation, code revisions and stuff like that. So that's if we have individual OKRs, and that might be phase one in your organization. Phase two is I might move towards team OKRs. Now, I got the same OKRs, but now bugs found post ship is a team OKR. Hours downtime caused by bugs is, again, the result of the team's effort, and percent of code reviewed is also a team. So now I have a combination of individual OKRs, things that I impact, and then team-based. And now on the formula calculated bonus, I'm still using hours downtime, which is a team-based metric. But my individual performance conversations cover off these other OKRs. Now, for some reason, we're not including percentage of code reviewed in our performance conversation. So what this tells us is as we set up key results, they can be team or individual and they can be part of a hard calculation or part of the conversation or neither. And so with these building blocks, you can pretty do a pretty snappy job of customizing how that compensation model works for team and individuals, and you can decide which way I go. So many times our clients actually start off with teams and reluctantly go into individuals later. Sometimes people already have individual and are trying to swim upstream and move them all to teams or come up with a mix. So that's it in summary. Three bands, use SMART, set up the key results to work with your compensation formulas and conversations. Hopefully that answers your questions. Look forward to talking more about these later. Bye for now.